Welcome to the Sci-Fi Invasion, 50 Movies in 50 Weeks, Why I, your host, Joey Hollywood, tries to tackle all 50 movies in this Mill Creek box set. The movie I watched today was Slipstream from 1989. Now, uh, right off the bat, I'm familiar with this movie only because it was suggested by Rick Wolf, the creator of Incognito Cinema Warriors and Robot Co-op. It was uh, suggested in a video that the final episode of the Incognito Cinema Warriors was going to be a riff on this movie. Um, I'm actually a really big fan of the Incognito Cinema Warriors. That's a, that's a collection of, I think, the, yeah, the, the first season. And then, uh, um, oh, and then there's uh, the very first episode. And then here's some of the season two stuff. Um, if you don't know what the Incognito Cinema Warriors is, I'll explain just a little bit. This one's fun. It's a model off of uh, Legend of Zelda. But, um, yeah, so the Incognito Cinema Warriors, um, it's kind of like Mystery Science Theater, um, but it's more narrative-based, and the production value is, like, through the roof. Like, I would say, like, for the most part, with the exception of a couple episodes of Season 1, the production value rivals the modern mystery science theater where in the modern mystery science theater it's almost sort of a detriment with incognito it's a benefit and i i really love it i actually would argue that i think the the talent that these guys have their their wit can sometimes more often than not top the original mystery science theater like they took the formula and improved it Season two was more narrative based and they started just only riffing on shorts. But in this video, uh, Rick Wolf, the creator, said that the final episode might be a riff on this movie, Slipstream. So I was pretty excited to see it. I've heard about it for a couple of years now because the production of that final episode has kind of been in limbo. But I was excited to see it. I was like, okay, well, let's see what this has to offer. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, well, firstly, since I started talking about Incognito, I'll, I'll finish this little tangent. But um, I don't think this would be a good fit for a final episode. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. But this movie's almost two hours long. With all the story that Incognito has up to this point, I feel like that final episode would be like three hours long. And to be honest, I'd probably be really cool with like a Lord of the Rings length Incognito Cinema Warriors episode but I'm not sure everyone else would be. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but like also this movie doesn't seem like it's bad enough to be cannon fodder for uh, a riffing show, but I'll get into that in a minute. But yeah, uh, I was really excited to see it just, just for that connection alone. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to make a video on the Incognito Cinema Warriors, like a big, big, high production video at some point because I, I love it. I Like I said, I think it's almost better than Mystery Science Theater. It definitely can be at times. Um, and if you're interested in, in watching them, I'm, I'm not sponsored by them, but if you're interested in watching them, um, they have all their show on, on DVD, but they are currently doing this thing where they're like riffing video games on Twitch. It's called Robot Co-op on Twitch. I'll put a link uh, in the comments and in the description so you can go check them out. It's worth your time. There are, they are so incredibly funny. Any support that I can send their way uh, is like the least I can do. But um, anyways, uh, like I said, I don't really feel like this one's bad enough to be fodder for a riffing show. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Like Riff Tracks did Indiana Jones, which is like one of my favorite movies of all time. And that one, like it's hilarious, but I don't know. Uh, I'll just get into it right, right off the bat. This feels like a real movie. It is the first movie on the set to feel like a real movie. The closest thing before was that Prisoner of the Future movie, but that felt like more like a like a really high quality student film, like one one of those really good ones that you're like, wow, this is a student made this. Um, this one feels like a real movie. Like right off the bat, the 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 music in it is is really good. The special effects are are pretty great. the The best thing about it though is the the setting, the locations, where this movie was shot. It looks gorgeous, and, and the premise is really interesting too. This it takes place on a planet that's like dominated by wind. Like the wind is just too powerful, and the entire society is built around the wind. 
And I think that's pretty cool. I haven't really seen that in science fiction, or if I have, I don't remember. But like, yeah, their mo mo motive of transportation is is planes and stuff like that. And then there's a lot of people like are embedded into the rock, like their homes are in the rock. Um, that's I thought that was a really cool element. And the the plot revolves around Mark Hamill is like a bounty hunter, or he's a um, sorry, my cat just jumped. Um, or he, he's like a bounty hunter or like a cop or something. He's, he's something to that effect. I, I, they keep on saying he's a cop, but it really seems like he's more of a bounty hunter than anything else. But he's trying to get this guy, opens up with him chasing this guy, and they catch him by like, they harpoon his arm and pull him down. And it's revealed later in the movie that this guy, who they keep on saying he's a murderer, but you find out later that he's actually a robot. He's an android. Who has like delusions of, I don't know how to say it, like, whoops, you okay baby? Cat just fell. <laughs> he has delusions of being like something greater, like he keeps on talking about God. And Mark Hamill wants him because there's a reward for him, because he killed somebody, he killed his master. And there, there are elements, like they humanize the robot a lot, like oh he had to kill the master, and like they... They, they, they really make this character out to be like this perfect person. Bill Paxton's character, I think I called him Bill Pullman before, Bill Paxton's character is this black market smuggler. And he steals the android away from our camel, so it's kind of like this cat and mouse game where they're, they're fighting over this, this android. And Bill Paxton eventually forms a connection with the robot and starts defending him against Mark Hamill. Here's the problem with that though. It's not very clear at the beginning of the movie that uh, Mark Hamill's the bad guy. Mark Hamill's just a really likable person. I, I think it's hard for him to play like really, really bad people unless he's like doing the, you know, the Joker voice and, you know, he's he's doing that routine. But this like predates that. It's this cat and mouse thing. And, and at the beginning, you think that, or at least I thought that like Mark Hamill was playing this anti-hero and Bill Bill Paxton was was the bad guy because Bill Paxton when they introduce him he's like molesting women he's like touching them without their consent and it's like it, it, it gets a little scuzzy but halfway through the movie I realized oh that's meant to be charming but I when it when it happened I was just I guess I was just passively watching but like I I assumed that he was not the good guy and Mark Hamill was gonna be the bad guy but as the movie progresses Mark Hamill just becomes like really, really freaking evil by the end of the movie. And like Bill Paxton becomes like really, really likable, even though he's still like touching women and like forcing himself onto them by the end of the movie. But the girls are just like, oh, they're, he's just so perfect. Oh, he's such a dog. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it's weird. And then there's also like this really bizarre like dance scene at the end of the movie. Like, some of that stuff towards the end of the movie is, like, definitely, like, riffing fodder. Like, it's you could definitely make fun of it because it's odd. But there's so much, like, preceding it that you'd have to get through that I don't feel like is that riff-worthy. Um, bringing it back to uh, Incognito Sun Warriors. Um, also, like, randomly, uh, Bing, Ki Bing Kingsley is just randomly at the end of this movie. And I think this is, like, post-Gandhi, too. So it's like, oh, they got, like, all three of these, like, Decently big name actors at the time, uh, Bill Paxton, Mark Hamill, maybe not Mark Hamill, but um, you know, Bing Kingsley, I think he already received an Academy Award at this point. He's just kind of in this movie. This is from the director of Tron, by the way. So it's like, it's not like a nothing movie. And it's weird that I couldn't find like an HD version of this movie on the internet. I couldn't even find a widescreen version of it. But it's like a real movie. Uh, it's, it took me by surprise that this is on this set. This would be like finding Crawl. On, on on like a 50 movie pack like oh this is actually a real movie like why is this on this cheapo set but i think there's enough interesting stuff here that i think this could actually warrant a, a big budget remake or uh even a tv series like I, I think i said this before but it's like midnight run but with like uh, on a like a post-apocalyptic world and has airplanes <laughs> like I, I don't know it, it's an interesting enough uh thing that i think there's you, you could pull something really interesting from this you could take a flawed movie and make it better with with uh, with a remake, which of course they're not going to do that. They're going to take already perfect movies and remake them. But yeah, sorry, this video is so incredibly unfocused. I talked maybe perhaps a little too much about the Incognito Cinema Warriors, but 
as much as I didn't hate this movie, like I'm glad I saw it. It's actually not that interesting on its own. Like I said, I think it could make for something more interesting in the future. Like if someone else tackled this material, this is far more interesting to me. And uh, if you check out Robot Co-op on Twitch, I, I think you won't feel like your time was wasted. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. I'm Joey Hollywood and I'll see you next time. Remember, please be kind and rewind.